My name is Kevin. I was diagnosed with colorectal cancer at stage 3B in August 2021. My symptoms started at, at the beginning of 2021, but you could actually track it back a bit further than that. At the beginning of lockdown, I was one of those who had to carry on working, but working from home. At that stage, I was 20 stone. I was quite unhealthy and I decided, right, I'll get one chance a, a day to actually go out to do some exercise and I was going to make the most of it. I started walking a bit more. I started eating healthier. I, I tracked my calories going in and by the end of 2020, I'd actually lost four and a half stone. Now, after that Christmas, I started developing um, constipation. I went to see the doctor and he gave me a few um, tips on how to actually do it. And he said, probably it's the change in diet. I'd also cut down coffee. Uh, caffeine can actually lead to constipation. On a follow-up visit there, um, I also spoke about I was having lower back pain, especially when I was driving. And it was... It, it, it was really difficult to describe what it was. It wasn't my bone that was hurting. It seemed to be internal. The GP just thought, right, you've lost weight, you've got less padding, uh, and that's your age, Kevin. I was 56 then. These things are going to start happening. So that was it. I just carried on regardless. But what I didn't actually mention was that I was also having a bit of blood in my poo. But then I was constipated, so it... It made a bit of sense. So uh, I just carried on. Um, I was struggling. I was going cycles of being constipated and eventually I'd be okay. The back pain was becoming more and more of a problem. But you know, nothing was actually crossing my mind about anything too serious. Or maybe it was, but I was ignoring it. In June 2021, I was on a training course in Mansfield and uh, got up in the afternoon, went for a wee and couldn't we? I just could not we. Nothing would actually come out. I went back into the room and I was obviously I was a bit worried by this and I went back to the toilet about an hour later and then all of a sudden I was able to go but this rattled me. So the following day I saw the GP. She examined me and said that my prostate was enlarged and had nodules on it and that's when I first heard the C word, cancer. So I was sent for a blood test to get my levels checked and then referred to a neurologist. Now when I saw the urologist, he, he examined me and he said, your PCA levels are okay. And my prostate, although it was normal for a gentleman of my age, was extended. Um, but then he asked me for other symptoms and I mentioned my constipation. And then he said, okay, I'll examine you again. But this time, rather than my prostate, he actually looked at the other side of my rectum. And that's when he actually came back with, right, I think I found your problem. I will refer you to the colorectal team. Now, instead of actually referring me back to my GP, which I know some specialists do, as I was leaving the clinic, I could hear him on the phone with the colorectal team. And things started moving quite quickly. I was sent for a, a CT scan, where they put a lot of air inside me. I was introduced to movie calls, so I had to empty all my blood, blood, uh, bowels out the day before. Then I was sent for a, uh, an MRI scan, and I had that as well when they told me to breathe normally and I struggled with that bit for some reason uh, and then followed up by a, an actual colonoscopy a sigmoidoscopy and again having to empty my bowels and in a strange way it was quite a relief because I knew when I actually took that horrible stuff that I wouldn't be constipated after it at that stage um, I was getting a bit worried because I was looking at Google, I know you shouldn't, but you know the symptoms were showing that cancer could be a possibility, especially the blood in my poo. And on that day, um, I was actually on my side, and before she started, um, the specialist actually asked me, have I got any other um, members of the family who have had a history of bowel problems? And I mentioned my mum has had polyps in the past, um, and she said, okay, we'll have a look, but I don't think I'll need to go very far and that was indeed what actually happened. As soon as she was actually inside me, I saw it on the screen myself and it wasn't a polyp. And, and she did say, don't worry about the size of it, it looks much, much bigger on the screen. Um, but that is no polyp. I, I could see that for myself. She did ask if it was okay for her to actually have a look at the rest of my bowel, which is quite nice of her. She had the look and it was very, very clean, no signs of polyps anyway. Then there was a hard part where I had to phone my wife and actually tell her a bit of a white lie. Um, obviously she needed to be told. I couldn't tell her because I could barely talk at that time. 
uh, and I, I just told her that the hospital said I was not allowed to leave and they did because I'd been fasting for 24 hours. She came in um, and I just couldn't look at her. Um, the specialist just told her, right, we've, I've had an examination and we were suspecting it was cancer and that's what it is. Things moved much, much quicker then. Um, I saw my uh, colorectal surgeon and he told me they'd had an MDT meeting and they decided to actually try and reduce the size of the, of the, um, the growth by giving me radiotherapy and chemotherapy. Now, as I was telling more and more people, this is when a terminology actually came out that <sighs> it still grinds me to this day um, when I was being told, oh, just stay positive, you'll be okay. Now, at that stage, I, I hadn't, I had no idea why it was actually winding me up so much, but I've got a better understanding now, you know, because it takes much more than positivity to actually get cancer out of your body. It's a big part of actually keeping going and keeping going with your treatment and everything, but it's not the do-all and end-all. And keeping positive is very, very hard. You can't just wish it out of the air. So I had a month's worth of um, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Another comment I was told because they were tablet form, they went proper chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. You can try that. I've been left with um, neuropathy, so every now and then I get very cold hands. Um, but other than that, there's been um, very little side effects that I've actually felt from it. I had to wait for 12 weeks for the radiotherapy to finish working. And when I had another scan and got to see my surgeon again on the 23rd of December, he said, there's good news and there's bad news. The bad news is that the, the tumour has not shrunk as much as they wanted it to. But the good news is it looks as if the nodes have actually been affected, So, but they'll actually find more about that during surgery. I was given a choice um, of they were going to try and actually remove the tumour or just go for the full APR where everything is actually taken out, rectum and anus, everything, and I'm left with a permanent colostomy. Um, I went for the for the job lot because I, I thought, no, let, let's do this properly. So I had to rebuild my pelvic floor because of a lot of the damage from the radiotherapy. The good news was, a couple of weeks afterwards, I was given um, the all clear. No need for further treatment. I was just going straight into surveillance. Didn't need any mop-up chemotherapy or anything. Now when he told me, I'd have expected to be jumping up and down. But it took him three different ways to actually explain to me what he was actually saying. And it, it's been like that all along. It's as if it's not really sunk in that I am now free of cancer. And it, it's, it's, it's been a hard slog mentally. From the beginning, I felt really guilty for putting my loved ones through this. You know, seeing my, my wife's face on that day where she was told that I had cancer. Um, and I felt, oh God, I'm putting these people through actually all this. Um, but you know, it wasn't my choice. It was not my choice. So I'm now four and a half months down the line. Uh, things are getting better. I'm still not able to sit longer than about 25, 30 minutes without having to move. Driving, 40 minutes maximum. Uh, but things do get better, apparently, because it's still early days. You know what, when people tell me that, it's still early days. I, I just want to ask, well, when are the early days going to finish? Because I've, I'm getting my energy back. I want to start going again, but every now and then something holds me back. But I'm, I'm so, so grateful for the help I've received. A lot of the forums, um, I've been careful which ones I actually sh share in. And Bowel Cancer UK, all these have actually been absolutely amazing, giving information, giving help giving support as well. Because once I was actually discharged, um, although I'm still on surveillance, I, it's as if there was a big cliff um, I'd fallen down. It. All the help actually finished. Okay, I can still phone my specialist nurses for advice, but it was it was finished. And it has been quite tough. Um, I'm trying to actually be as positive as I can be, but there are days where I really do struggle. But you know, that, that's been my journey. What I try and do now is try and actually raise awareness that if there's something different with your bowels, then you need to get it checked out. It's the same with 
especially with men, for with the wee as well, with prostate cancer. I try and support people who have actually had the operation after me in explaining how things have actually developed for me. It's the only thing I can actually do or use my journey to actually help other people. That's what I'm hoping for. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm a different person today. It really has changed me. Um, physically, obviously, I've got a permanent stoma with a colostomy bag. But mentally, I think I am a different person. I just feel different. I've got a different outlook. Things that used to bother me don't have that much of an effect on me anymore. So, that's where I am today. Four and a half months in surveillance mode and I no longer have cancer.